Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio, live, of course, with your hostess, Tracy Kennedy. I'm live on Revolution Radio, Studio A, and Trace Elements Radio. We... I guess there's no light way to just jump into this, so I'm going to just jump in, and you guys need to hold on. Because there are some cemeteries cemeteries interesting with this Christmas moon this full moon and I wanted to bring some of these to the attention of everyone listening numbers and dates I know some people aren't into that but we are going to be going into some detail on the meetings, things that we've said before. Now, I consider this next part, this is just taken from my personal worksheet, and I decided to just share it with you, because I believe this is another layer of confirmation to what many of us have known for a long time. It is the tradition, transition, from our way of life into the next order. And it's going to take place soon. And it appears it will be before Christmas of 2016. This full moon indicates the moon was full December 25th, 180, Gregorian calendar. And of course again tonight. This is the first time we've had a Christmas full moon since 77. Won't happen again until 2034. The December full moon is called the full cold moon because it's the last one of the year, says NASA, which has a spacecraft called the Lunar Resonance Orbiter right now looking at our moon because they're expecting something. Now this is from them. As we look at the moon on such an occasion, Christmas, it's remembering, it's worth remembering that the moon is more than just a celestial neighbor. That's from John Keller, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. The geologic history of the moon and the earth are intimately tied together, such that the earth would be dramatically different without the moon. Oh yes, yes it will, because it's an egg. Full moon. Again. Not since 1977, so 38 years ago, 3 plus 8 is 11. The moon will be full exactly at 6.11 a.m. EST here, North America. 77 is again 7 11s. This will be the eighth full moon on Christmas, signifying the new order. The seventh, or divine perfection, fell not coincidentally on 1977. The sevens are over. The season of rebirth, transition, and new order is beginning tonight. Eighty-eight days from the last blood moon on 928 443 so 11 and we see 44 again days from the blood moon on 10 8 14 265 which is 13 days from the blood moon on 4 4 15 in 1996 we missed a full moon on Christmas Instead, it fell on Christmas Eve, 3.30 p.m. EST, 
12. So take note of the 996 and the 33. A full moon on Christmas will not happen again for 19 years. There was a Christmas full moon, of course. 1776. It's interesting when we realize that the 17th of Tammuz, Hebrew calendar, fell on July 4th in 1776 and in 2015. Only 12 times in America's history, the full 239 years, there will well, there were only three Christmas full moons in all of the 20th century. 1901, 1920, 1977. So for the 19th century, we had 1806, 1825, 1863 were the years of the Christmas full moon. In total, we have eight full moons on Christmas in America's 239 years and 12 times America's birthday fell on the 17th of Tammuz. Eight means new creation, new birth, new order. Three eights is the name for Jesus. Twelve means sovereign, governmental, or divine order. This is well, the twelve. This is why the prophet, and there's many of them, and we'll go into that, always has twelve disciples. It's the wheel. It's the zodiac. It's why there's always three kings. That's Orion's belt. But it is the divine decree. This is the law and order. The establishment of structure by one God's hand. How he chooses to organize time, seasons, institutions. So a Christmas full moon occurred in 1863. 36 days after Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. 1863 is 18 or 666. And 36 is the inverse of 63. Now look at these numbers. 1 plus 8 plus 6 plus 3. 18. And there is an 18 in 1863. Two 18s, which is 666. And 36 literally reads three sixes. Three times six is 18. So there are three ways in which 36 or 63 have three sixes. The Gettysburg Address, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a civil, a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who came, who here gave their lives, and that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. Now, it's interesting that many speculate of a coming civil war. I think we're have, we have such a war going on right now. The divine comedy, the divine war. Already. And we approach the coming beast system, civil. Unrest will certainly be one aspect of it. And for America's inevitable implosion. And we consider all the 18s or 666 that connect this full moon on Christmas back to the most famous speech in American history 
history, it's remarkable. It should be noted that the number of days between Gettysburg Address and this Christmas is 55,553. Five, the number of grace. And added together, we see again 23, pointing us to the golden calf from Cleveland and Revelation 12 sign of September 23rd, 2017. Two days after Christmas will be exactly 500, well, 55,555 days from the Gettysburg Address. It's interesting because five multiplied by itself literally means grace upon grace. When we look at 12, 25, 2015, we see another 18. 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 5, 18. This bombardment of the 666 is pointing to the coming beast. The beast who will rise. We are told there will be signs in the heaven and they are increasing in frequency leading up to the point where we will actually begin seeing this undeniable impact on life on earth. Now let's apply this 36 day theory to the last full moon on Christmas in 1977. Subtract 36 days to 11, 1977, the 114th anniversary of the Gettysburg Address. November 19, 1977, Egyptian President Anwar Sadat becomes the first Arab leader to make an official visit to Israel. When he meets with Israeli Prime Minister, um, what's his name? Begin? Anyway, seeking a permanent peace settlement. We have TAP Portugal flight 520 or 425 crashing into an airport in Portugal, killing 131, leaving 33 survivors. In other words, 38 years and 11 years ago on 1119, there were 33 survivors among 131 dead. Egyptian president became the first leader to officially visit Israel. Well, Arab leader. Remember 19? The years until the next full moon on Christmas? Years separated the 1943 Israel statehood and the 1967 Temple Mount. This Christmas will be 300 and well 638 days from the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017. If we calculate the number of days inclusive, we see 639. In one, we see 6 and 11, and the other, we see 666. And for those who are not yet accustomed to looking at the numbers this way, I'll explain. Three, no, let me do it another way. 639, add those, you get 18. 6 plus 3 plus 9, 666. Also, you will see the 666 when you simply examine 3 and 639. As independent numbers as 6 is the average of 3 and 9. So, why is this important? This is a message. This is the return. The actual return. Me, I think of the beast. 
when I look at this. I can't get away from it. I try to. I try to ignore it. But the occult meanings of this winter solstice and Christmas cannot be underestimated. And when we have our Christmas Santa, who has made all jolly and, and sweet this elf to sell you Coke? Interesting to sell you Coke at a time when Coke really had Coke in it. And you gave it to the children. For the children. <laughs> for the evil elf. It's for the drunken god. Santa Claus is a drunken space alien. Dark forces that govern the province and the cosmos cannot be ignored at this time. And most Christian apologists focus on prophecies here that foretold of Christ. But if we dig deeper, we find even more prophecies and the hidden esoteric nature. Eight 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 is the number of Jesus Christ's name, according to Greek numerology. And Old Testament prophecies um, employed the number eight 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 over and over again. Calculations always reveal in the Bible the number eight 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 saying the Christ. The number of the name of the Old Testament God Yahweh is twenty six. Mass extinctions happen every twenty six million years, according to research of science now. Jesus eventually displayed his, his hidden knowledge of the cosmos when he described the concept of being hurled into outer darkness in final judgment. He had an understanding of the outer darkness, and it's consistent with scientific understanding of the Big Rift. We'll get into this in the new year. It's not for now. But the same things are being repeated to us over and over and over again. So the occulted meanings of this. Solstice, Christmas, the dark beast. You put your kids on, on his lap. The roots here. Astrotheology. And I realize a lot of people say, well, you know, that's just... That's just what? Pagan? Please, when we stopped looking inside, we looked up and saw those big shiny things in the stars. Twelve apostles, one guy, thirteen, three kings giving a gift, the return of the king, the lords of the ring. This is law and order in its deep meaning. It's become the basis for all chemistry, alchemy, Kabbalah, astrology, religion, all of them, all the ancient mystery schools, later used to manipulate the masses by hiding the knowledge of the consciousness from the people today as occultism, either light or dark. For an entire host of religions containing deep esoteric allegories, I guess. They know this. And are pandemic throughout every civilization on earth. But this points back to what I've been telling you. That this was rewritten. We're also going to wait until the New Year so I can tell you how the Brothers Grimm rewrote the language and the first dictionary that was copied so that this would be dark 
all religions talk about a guy, a savior, the sun, which is actually the sun that we look up in the sky, the galactic crossing, the voodoo astrology, 12 signs. But they changed the date from the 21st to the 25th. It's not because Christianity went pagan. It's because it's from Rome. It was always pagan. They always knew this. Now, just a note on the value of religious experience. And while I do contend that religion, in general, holds humanity back and is used as a box for consciousness, the application of concepts and ideas which are embedded in religion can be of value. The effect of prayer, worship, meditation, mysticism, and the like. Their effect on consciousness cannot be overlooked and often involves an image of a Christ or a Buddha or a Krishna or a Mecca or a magic stone or a rock or, you know, I don't know, the great pumpkin. We've discussed several times decoding fiction because it's what I basically do for you. I decode the stories that we hear, that we've seen. It's all as above, so below fractal symbolism. We're giving meaning to images in this case as a result of our knowledge and choices. If the Bible, for example, has a feeling of spirit for you, then this reveals the change of meaning you've given it and the charge and the frequency and the currency. The knowledge presented below and what I will go into does not differ in the least of genuine spiritualizing effects of authentic religious experience. And I'm not saying do not celebrate this with your friends and your family. Celebrate. Whether it's a Christian cross or a tree, the effect is the same. The real value can be detected in the quantity and the quality of your actions as a result of experiences that you have in your life. The adage goes, by their deeds you shall know them. So astrotheology. Many have heard of this, and astronomy, and astrology. I insist that people have not heard about this enough, and it's not by chance. Official history has been changed to hide the fact that the world has been controlled by the same interbreeding tribe for hundreds if not thousands of years. I could argue about that. And I usually do. But I won't this time. This is never more so than with the major religions. They all have inner and outer levels of knowledge. The inner level carries the secrets going back to the ancient mystery schools. Places like al Kebulan, Sumer, Babylon, Kemet. These include secrets, a bloodline, and those, and only the chosen few are initiated into this awareness. The other level is where the secrets are hidden in code, an allegory, and sold with a deity to the masses as truth. It's how it's done. It's why all of the gods, the sun god kind of thing, the son of God being, I don't care if it's Quetzalcoatl, care if it's Jesus, if it's Krishna Marti, it is the same. We're talking about an event. This is why the resurrection takes three days. New Testament, 
The stories are based on initiation ceremonies, secrets that all include astrology and the sun that were performed probably by priests and priest kings. They are presented as a literal story to fool the people, especially Christianity, Judaism, Islam. The religions, these ones, all spawned from the same source, are carriers of secrets inner and controllers of the people by hiding the secrets with allegory, with stories, trying to be outer, trying to be true. The same basic Jesus tale, the Son of God who died for humanity, was told around the world thousands of times before Christianity, unless one guy, or a group of four guys, which I contend is closer, changed these things. And now there are 15 pre-Christian gods that have the exact same traits and stories like Jesus. 900 BC, Krishna was born of a virgin with a star in the east, signaling his coming. A tyrant slaughtered thousands of infants trying to kill the newborn king. He was a teacher in the temple, a healer who performed miracles, crucified between two thieves, resurrected from his death. Around the same time, we are told in Greece lived the god Attis, born of a virgin, again December 25th. Now, we know that the galactic event starts on either 21st or 22nd. It's been moved, but it's the same event. Now, Attis, again martyred on a crucifix, died for three days, resurrected. Mithra, Persian god, we are told, 1200 BC, born of a virgin, December 25th, traveled with 12 disciples, performed miracles, died for three days, was resurrected. We used to look up and know what this meant. He was actually called the truth and the light and worshipped on Sunday. I still look up. Now the very basic storyline came out of Constantine's Council of Nicaea. The stories we may have known before, but I'm telling you, our people used to be able to look up and know what this meant. Christianity is elements of Roman belief, particularly Mithra. As the protector of the empire, Mithra, closely tied to the sun gods, Helios, Apollo, Mithra's birth, again changed to December 25th, or may have been 25th, and they just moved it, and then built their little calendar around it. But it was always close to solstice. That became Jesus' birthday. Shepherds, were to have witnessed his birth, were to have been taken in the Last Supper with Mithra before he returned to heaven. Mithra's ascension, correlating to the sun's return to prominence around spring equinox, became Christian holiday of Easter. Christians came or took over a cave temple dedicated to Mithra in Rome, exactly on Vatican Hill, making the seat of the Catholic Church. Christians did not take over that hill. The popes are directly related by blood to the Roman emperors and their inner circle. It's the same guys. Why make a new story when you got one that's working? And it's all about you not being in charge of you. The Mithra priest title was Pater, Patrum. Later became 
the title for the Bishop of Rome. Papa, Pope, the Pope, the Pole. That's why Santa is still the same guy. From the North Pole. Travels down your chakras. And out your fireplace. It's dirty when you look at it. It's creepy when I look at it. The fathers of Christianity are the fathers of Rome. They are the priest kings. They are the dark side. This is now the dark work. Always has been the dark work. Everything we are told about Jesus, the Romans and the Persians believed about Mithra. Before that, ancient history, it was people who actually looked up in the sky and saw the crossing. Now Sunday, again, sacred day for Mithras because he was a sun god. And they called this the Lord's Day. The writer, H.G. Wells, pointed out that many phrases used by Paul for Jesus had the exact same as those used by Mithra. Exact one. So following the ancient deities, which were stars, they all came from the myth of virgin birth which we know can happen and then had crucifixion and then had resurrection Krishna of Hindustan Buddha of India Savil Hana of Bermuda Zulus and Osiris of Egypt Odin of the Scandinavians Krait of Chaldea Zoroaster, Mithra, Baal, Taut, Indra, Bali, Jo, Jo, Widaba, Tammuz, Atis, Zeusus of Thrace, Thoro of the Bonses, Adap of Assyria, Devatat. There's on and on and on and on. Thor of the Gauls, Cadis of Greece, Hill and Fata, Janet, Quetzalcoatl, Prometheus. There's even two in China. The world had 16 crucified saviors before Christ. We are told Part of the truth, not the truth. Their stories have been changed so we would forget they're talking about the heavens. Most people aren't aware that there are identical teachings of Christianity all over the world. It's why we sometimes argue about whose story it is. I don't care whose story it is myself. I want to know who made it. And this is the matrix of power. Performing miracles on the cross, which is the galactic crossing. It's all related to winter solstice, midwinter festival, when the sun is at the most powerful point in its cycle in the northern hemisphere. This is why all peoples, all religions have a story of the fall, the fall of man. But before the fall there is the golden age. Let's look at that. The seasons. When our people lived on the land in new seasons. When a tree becomes golden, the leaves fall. That's it. The days of darkness, that's just December event. The fall is just the trees and the leaves falling. That used to mean something to us. So anyway. They said that on the solstice, December 21st, 22nd, 
the son died. A few days later, on the 25th, that's probably why they said 25th. i got to use that in there. They said that the son was born, born again. Thus we have a long line of sun gods given a birthday of December 25th. The Jesus, the Gospels, is a symbol. The stories include a host of other mystery school knowledge, esoteric concepts. Three days, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, sun rises at the exact same latitudinal declinations degree. This is the only time in the year that the sun actually stops its movement northward or southward in our sky depending on where you live. On the morning of December 25th the sun moves one degree northward beginning its annual journey back to the north ultimately bringing spring anything steadily moving all year then suddenly stopping for three days is considered to have died. Therefore, God's Son, who is dead for three days, moves one degree northward on December 25th, symbolically born again. Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, is a star in the east. December 24th, it aligns with the three brightest stars where? Orion's Belt, which have been called all over the world since ancient times the Three Kings. The Three Kings line up perfectly with Sirius, pointing to the exact spot in which the sun will rise next morning. The larger constellation in which this takes place is known as, or well, to the ancients, as the Manger, the Cradle which is visible just before dawn on the 25th. So the three kings, or three magi, effectively follow the star in the east to the manger, the birthplace of God's son in winter solstice. Easter derives from this, the eastern star. It is serious, again. Three gifts of the magi, frankincense, myrrh, gold. Frankincense is amber, resin, burnt in solar temples, myrrh is known as the tears of the sun, gold too, long represented the sun. The recurrent virgin theme just represents constellation Virgo, Latin for virgin. The ancient glyph for Virgo looks like an M. M names the virgin mothers like Jesus as Mary, Adonis as Mira, Buddha's Maya, um, Horus's mother, Isis Mary. Virgo is also called the house of bread. And the zodiacal symbol shows a woman holding a chaff of wheat, representing August, September. It is a time of harvest. Bethlehem means house of bread. Reference to constellation Virgo, not a place on earth. It is the lowest point in the sky, December 22nd. The sun resides in the southern cross, or the crooks. The cross formed by stars, symbolizing the crucifixion. So after steadily traveling downward since last solstice, the sun stops movement at the solar crux for three days rises again the sun dies on the cross after three days and is resurrected the reason this space event became an earth one was because of kings and priest kings and the divine rule of these a-holes so no people in the ancient world believed the God to be the sun. That belongs in all the disinformation file. Point of fact, every ancient culture and nation on earth 
have all used the sun as the most logical, appropriate symbol to represent the glory of something unseen in the heavens. So without the sun, there would be no plants on top of the earth. In, in the waters, there's different rules. So, here's some important things to remember. First, with the exception of Japan, the ancient world, all the mythologies, understood the sun to be a masculine in quality and the moon feminine. Second, English language is derived from German. In Germanic, the word sun is spelled S-O-N-N-E, sun. Grimm had a lot to do with this. So two words can and have been used interchangeably. Ancient man saw in his male offspring his own image and likely likeness because boys carry their dad's DNA, almost an exact copy. That's why the king of kings is father to the son. And his own experience as a father was proved by the person of his son. Thus, it is assumed that God's son was but a visible representation of an unseen creator in the heavens. And why you had to bow down and tithe and give your soul to these, once again, a-holes on the planet Earth. It is said, when you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. Say this another way, the Father is glorified in the Son. The ancient peoples realized that no one on Earth could ever claim the ownership of the Son. And it's funny that Rome actually bought it. The sun's rays. I don't know if it, it went through, but we've talked about that. But such a magnificent heavenly body must belong to an unseen creator of a universe. It became, figuratively speaking, not man's son, but God's son. It's only a short hop and a skip to understanding that God's Son was the light of the world. Logically, even if man does himself dies, as long as the sun comes up each day, life on earth will continue forever and ever. Amen. Ra, Sun God. Therefore it is said that the ancient text that everlasting life was the gift, the gold, that the Father gives through his son. The ancient man, the most dangerous feared enemy, was the unknown darkness, the night, whereby making the sun the light, heaven's gift to the world. Without its light, we could not see. Without its warmth, we could not move. Without its energy, our food cannot grow unless you're in the ocean. Different rules again. So, our very lives depended on the sun emanating that energy, making our life. It was our Savior. God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we may have everlasting life. The ancients knew this. They didn't have to be told this. They didn't need a God, although they most likely had some sort of thing like that. Probably everything's had some sort of thing that you gave thanks to when we thought, when we at least stopped, when we stopped even giving a name for a day for the earth in our days of the week. The Prince of Darkness dark evil, the devil, the devil. God is the good. God's son is the light of the world, the prince of peace. The peace he brings is solace. Solace again 
from the word solar, sun. Egyptian personification, the prince of darkness, was known as Set. The sun, known as Horus, every night the sun sets. The dark prince takes the world. Every morning the sun is born again. Sunrise, Horus is risen on the horizon. This is where we get the word hero and cheer hooray. Also why an interpretation of the zodiac is a horror scope. At daybreak, this wonderful newborn child, God's son is born again, Horus has risen every even today. When the sun comes up, we see it as Horus risen or the horizon. His life is divided into twelve parts or steps across the heavens. Each day twelve Horus is twelve hours. This is the origin of the modern twelve step program. Horus is the newborn son, the bringer of light. Later he became the devil. But there needs to be a bad guy. So in Latin, bringer and light bringer is Lucius, Lucifer, Luke. God's son brought his wonderful light to the world and distributed it over 12 months. So it said, God's son had 12 companions, helpers, that assisted his life-saving work. And so it was, God's son had 12 apostles, months, that followed him religiously through his life. Incidentally, now you know why the American jury system has 12 jurors who help bring the truth to light with the light of truth. Keep in mind God's Son symbolically represented the light of truth but was condemned by his enemies who could not endure the light of truth in their life. When we confronted with harsh realities of light, the light of truth, which we do not wish to face, which runs counter to your views, such truth is judged in your mind, or judged in the temple area of your brain, and put to death in your head. God's Son, the truth and the light, is put to death in Golgotha or the place of the skull located between your darn ears. This putting to death of the light of truth in your mind is always accompanied by two thieves regret for the past and fear of the future. And of course God's son goes to his death wearing a corona a crown of thorns. So your temples at the Golgotha, which means place of the skull, God's Son, the light of truth, is judged, crucified, along with two thieves, past and future. The sun's corona, the plasma, the atmosphere around the sun, allegory, and used as the sun's crown of thorns. Cultures all over the world kept track of time, seasons based on the movement of the sun. They invented circular sundials, sun calendars, which daily and yearly recorded time. Lunar calendars record months. This method of circular solar based time used by the Mexicans, the Mayans, the Incas, the Aztecs, the Sumerians, everyone al Capelon, everyone in Kemet, Babylonians, Assyrians, Egyptians, Celts, Aryans, Chinese, Japanese, everybody everywhere. And we made it pretty much the same. We all knew these myths. That's why it didn't take that long for them to take us over with their strange circular language and the fact that most of us didn't need to write. We didn't write. 
they actually, Rome did not want us to have the printing press so we could even read what they were putting in that book. They didn't want you to read that. That's why they said it in Latin. They didn't even want you to understand it. And it was Rome that kept the printing press away from people for so long. But first of all, they had to teach us to read so we'd buy their crap. So out of these solar, circular, pictorial sun calendars developed the Holy Cross. The sun is portrayed on a cross, a circle, perpendicular lines intersecting in the middle, horizontal axis representing the spring and autumn, equinoxes, the vertical axis representing summer and winter solstice. This is the reason you see a circle around the Christian and Celtic ancient modern crosses since the earth experienced four seasons all the same and equal in time. Each year the round sun calendar was divided in four parts. This is why we have the Bible, only four Gospels. Of this point there can be no doubt. The four Gospels represent the four seasons which collectively tell the entire story of the life of the God's Son. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Spring, Summer, Autumn, Winter, and surprisingly not Middle Eastern or African names. This is another clue of who wrote this book. This is why the famous painting of the Last Supper, the pictures, it pictures the twelve followers of the sun in four groups of three, the seasons. The book of Mark is the book of Mars. The planet archetype of Mars is the rulers of Aries, which makes the book of Mark the book of Aries. The word arise comes from Aries first house of the zodiac where the sun arises during spring, the equinox, and Easter. Aries is the month of April, which comes from the Latin aperio, meaning to open, the opening, the beginning. Just as Aries is the first zodiacal sign, Aries was, and still is in many cultures, the first month of the calendar year. It was the first month. You wouldn't put the first month in the dead of winter. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio. Live, of course, with Revolution Radio and Trace Elements Radio. So, there is a reason that these words are the same. Luke, Latin for Lucius. Leo the Lion. This is showing us when our languages were changed because our people on this planet did not speak like this. Christ, the other sun symbol, often called the Lion of Judah. Ireland, the name Leo was Luke, another solar and mystic hero. Wales, he was Lu. Romans, Lugus, Sumerians, Luhal, or Lughal, depending who knows how to speak Sumerian. It's not the same dude on walkabout. It's an astrological sign of Leo in Christian icons. We have one of the invel- what what do they even call them? The um I don't know. Evangelical people represented by a lion. In the nativity scenes, we have four animals around a cradle of the sun king, the sun god. One of these is a lion. Christians believe that there was one in the area, I guess, and just happened to wander into the inn, 
take a peek at the sleeping child. Good thing it wasn't hungry. The book of Matthew, or Mat, is Ma'at, the Egyptian goddess. Mat is almost always symbolized blindfolded, holding the scales of justice, which relates to Libra. Libra was the last sign officially added to the zodiac, which is why Matt is the last of the twelve to join. Symbolically, also, well, symbolized sometimes by an eagle, Christianity, because Aquila, the eagle, is the closest animal to the constellation Libra. Matt is actually pronounced Mayat. She is Mahat of the Brahmins, Meth of the Celts, Tiamat of the Skalds, Maya of the Romans, Mera of the Pagans. These names were changed. These words were changed, and we will study in the new year how our languages were changed. So, Bible, we read Matthew, was the disciple that the other eleven didn't want to accept. The reason for this is because he was a tax collector. However, behind all the crap, we have a secret here. The symbol of tax collectors has always been scales or balances. This is because they do not only do they not want well not only do they want currency they took grain livestock and their lackeys carry scales around the same way today in rural eastern communities finally book of John is a book of Aquarius John for January which is the month corresponding to Aquarius the symbol for Aquarius is a man carrying, pouring a pitcher of water. This is why we have baptism. And John the Baptist, John's death by beheading, is another allegory here. Whereby on August 29th, John's Aquarius head star moves across the horizon, while the rest of his body constellation remains below the horizon. This is how they took us over. We knew these signs. We knew these symbols. The exact same time, dusk, August 29th, the sun sets in Leo, the kingly sign representing Herod, Herod the king. So Herod beheads John. John comes from Jahan, or Jan, which comes from the earlier Enos, the Ones, the fish god. The Jahan or Jan gives us other names like Jane and Joan and Janus, Jesus, Jazus. Eventually, it gives us the word for January, the Jahan Uary. During January, Aquarius, the Nile waters are the purest, or were anyway. So Egyptians would collect it and use it for rites. The sign of Aquarius was changed, but now associated with baptism, cleansing, purification by water. This was borrowed, like all things were, from the Israelis. It finds its way into Christian traditions. We all are studying the exact same thing. We are following the same thing that is not ancient, it is new, although we knew these signs and symbols. But we can see that the Gospels clearly detailed the signs of the Zodiac. The Sun King must pass through these signs. They are his, what do we even call them, crones. Kron, time, Kron, specifically relates to the round of the zodiac. They are his measures, his apostles. Post means, well, a, a color of the zodiac. Or 
or demarcation post apostles. They are his disciples. Disc means circle. This is the zodiac. Christian religion is a parody of what our people knew on a deep way. It is making them physically and well they want your thoughts they do they want your thoughts it is now the esoteric because we have Santa Christmas is ancient it has nothing to do with pagan but the Romans that took over same people of Rome called this holiday Saturnia which was a week week long of lawlessness December 17th through the 25th that honored Saturn included sacrifice intoxication naked caroling rape especially of children during these seven days there were no punishments for breaking any laws according to Roman law around 4 AD Saturnia changed to Christianity I guess in the hopes that they would convert everyone into Christianity without knowing it and by promising that they would still celebrate Saturnia they just changed the name it was something we did anyway or was done anyway or at least the Romans did it we probably always celebrated this day in one way or another but because Saturnia did not follow anything close to Christian or principles that we used to believe in leaders designated the last day of Saturnia as the birthday of Jesus Roman Catholic Church under Pope Paul II forced Jews to run through the city naked as tribute to Saturnia. So, from the Vatican's role in the rise of anti Semitism, because they were to run, the Jews were richly fed, so to make the race difficult for them, and at the same time amusing for a spectator. They ran amid Rome's taunting shrieks and peals of laughter. The Holy Father stood richly in, on a balcony and laughed. It's important to note, Saturn is Satan. The rings that we give during a wedding ritual are Saturn. The word Saturday originates from a new, relatively new English word which means Saturn's day. To this day, many people continue unknowingly to celebrate Saturnia, participation in debauchery and gluttony and rape. Now, according to Wiki, Christmas stems from an old English word, Christimis, which means Christ Mass. Christmas is derived from a new English which is from an old English a phrase recorded around 1038 Christ becomes Christi is Greek for Christos translation of the Hebrew Masia, Messiah and Mass is from Latin Misa, the celebration of the Eucharist. The form christened Mass is also historically used, but is now considered archaic. Derives from a Middle English, Christian Mass, literally Christian Mass, Xmas, abbreviation of Christmas, found particularly in print based on the letter X, the chi, and the Greek, Christosis, Christ, through numerous stylings, guides, discourages its use now. 
it has precedent in Middle English, the XP mass, XP. That's why we had Windows XP. So astonishingly, Saturn is depicted in Christian art. Churches all over the world. You can't hide this. On the ceiling of St. Andrew's Church, Waterloo Street, East Sussex, there is a painting showing the sun surrounded by stars and a comet and a crescent moon and Saturn. Keep that in mind. Saturn is Satan. It is Lucius. The inner circle of twelve stars is the twelve apostles surrounding the sun, no matter how you spell it. Again, it is a reference for Jesus Christ being the Son of God, the unknown one, the one we don't see. Outer circle has nine stars, the crescent, ellipse of the moon, Saturn, and a comet that appears to be perhaps diving towards the sun. The nine stars plus Saturn may represent the ten planets of our solar system. If Neribu is counted as one of those stars, I guess. The moon represents the divine feminine, the virgin mother. Cathedral um, in Kalik, Germany, clearly shows Saturn on their stained glass window. Each season is reflected by the tilt and the spin of our axis representing the sun being more prominent in the northern hemisphere for half the year and in southern hemisphere for the other half. Winter solstice occurs in winter when the sun has reached its lowest elevation reflected with the fewest amount of daylight hours, which is driving me nuts, and the greatest amount of nighttime hours. And that's usually around 21st, depending on where you live. The four seasons are reflected in the amount of sun and darkness we receive. Winter solstice, shortest day of the year. Summer solstice, longest. Autumn, daily. Sunlight is waning. Day and night are equal. It talks of the fall. Summer, or spring, Daylight is waxing. Day and night are again equal in length. People. I don't want to call them pagans. It has such a bad rap. Everyone celebrates their holidays on the exact same sacred astrological dates. Christmas is no exception. This particular holiday has been celebrated for much longer by the ancients as one of the four great festivals that reflect each season's. It taught us when to plant. And various schools have also celebrated the change of seasons in association with signs in the heavens that fall and spring and fall, of course, as well as summer and winter, solstice. In an esoteric sense, the sun cycle represents your soul's growth in consciousness along with the illumination of your soul. Envision this. Imagine that spring is the birth of your soul. Once you have reached summer, your soul begins its descent from the spiritual home into incarnating on this planet as the days begin to get shorter beginning on summer solstice the decrease in sunlight represents a veil of forgetfulness where we do not remember why we came here what our purpose is as the days become longer beginning in winter solstice your soul is released from its physical presence makes its ascension once again back towards its spiritual home the source on the wheel of life winter is the season of rest represents preparation for a renewed life similar to how some animals go into hibernation 
It's also known that the time of germination as spring brings the flowering of plant life that follows the maturation process into summer. Autumn gives us our crops along with new seeds. We will return to winter to complete the full cycle. Prepare for the renewed life. This is what's happening in your body. Of the four sacred directions and the four cardinal colors, winter is represented by the north and the color blue, which in Salagi literally means cold, Cherokee, if you will. The seasons teach us everything we need to know about the process of birth, life, death, rebirth, alchemy provides us the saying as above so below. Think of this along the lines of how we came here and how we leave this vessel. As the sperm fertilizes the egg we go through maturation process that is identical to the exact number of days of both the maturation of corn from a seed along with the gestation period of a woman to give birth to a child child travels down the birth canal, a tunnel. As the child is brought from darkness to birth, the light. This is why we hear the same stories only backwards in people who have returned from death. And confirmed by all those near-death experiences, we follow the exact same process, going through a tunnel, following the light, back to the source grander scheme. This cycle is repeated through seasons, our personal lives from birth to death, providing and proving how our life is simply a mere fractal, the entire universe, the cosmos, ultimately the source. Solstice, the winter one, falls under Capricorn, represents materialism, ego, this is a time when Jesus, the Son, indulges in materialism, Capricorn, after leaving his father's home, because he's grown up. This is the time when Jesus, the Son, dies on the cross, where the Son remains in the Southern Cross constellation, three days, only to be reborn, as the days begin to get longer after this three-day period. This is called the three nights, or the dark nights of the soul. And no, NASA did not say it's going to go dark for three days. We just went through the three days of darkness. NASA doesn't have to tell you that. You have to go outside and do this really weird thing called looking up. What religion, all of them, fails to teach us are the meanings of our lives. Adepts of mystery schools, practitioners of occult scientists, can also attest of all the cosmic currents and life force of each season. We feel this on a basic level. They have claimed our birthright. All of nature responds to these currents. It is only the human family that has forgotten. Because well, we've been traumatized so badly, but in general, we can no longer see the inner side of our reality. The light forces are moving either towards or outwards from Earth. This is what creates our season. The path of the sun intricately involved in the movement of light currents that fall on our Earth. During the fall equinox, the light from the sun penetrates the outer atmosphere, the layers of the earth. Winter solstice, the light penetrates into the core of our globe. From a distance outside our solar system, earth looks like a fiery sphere spinning in the heavens. During the spring equinox, the light once again is on the periphery of the earth. At summer solstice, the light is high in heavens. Note the light is deep within the core of earth during winter. 
and high in the heavens during summer. It is a metaphor and it is reality on the inner levels. We can minister to our own personal psychology if we attune ourselves to it, the influences of different radiances of light falling to earth each month during the solstices and the equinox. Chinese mystical system has a name for each hour of every day. So each hour of every day could be used to strengthen yourself. Light waves descending to and ascending outward from the earth are an occult fact, are a fact in real life, meaning an inner reality most don't want to see anymore. Those of us desiring a more complete communion with the spiritual forces must come to intelligent terms with this this reality for it's the movement of these ever-changing currents of light poured onto earth that provide our evolutionary growth which happens quick not like we were told by um, what's his face you know that guy these are surges of power they prevail propel all kingdoms on earth upward lift the spinal spirit of fire of the body into the heart and the head centers and have an effect of providing illumination for those of us who are prepared to intelligence and intentions to participate we are supposed to be bringing these energies up and out that's why I got a little problem with Santa and I'm not going into Santa so much today because I have to be honest with you, I scared the crap out of myself. <laughs> I had a dream. I connected to that Bacchus pen spirit and uh, I had a dream. More than a dream. A vision. You know, I was always taught that dreams you can learn to control. Visions you can't. So I got to look at this horned beast not a big fan I'm I'm not I'm into the festival and the merriment and the big food but this beast that is the beast this is not light and dark here we're talking evil not a good plan not a good idea it's why it terrifies the children it's why they came out with Krampus this year Krampus it's because this is a very big evening this moon is big and then I kept dream dreaming of a cow jumping over the moon and I can't remember that nursery rhyme but guard your soul tonight probably means nothing you could probably ignore it but just in case we need to minister to ourselves solstice historically has been a time of birth for all of earth's great teachers because it is the time of a new light for the planet world teachers choose this particular time to incarnate because they always bring with them a new teaching this teaching is a new state for the people of earth for the beings of earth winter solstice December 21st same time that the planetary keynote the sound it's a sound and the light frequency changes from Sagittarius to Capricorn. At the time of winter solstice, the light current submerged within the core of the Earth reverse, change course, just like the Sun, which is reflecting its southward course, turning northward. A reverse movement of any planetary body creates a powerful force until the new motion or path stabilizes so from December 21st to midnight on the morning of December 25th there is a powerful force field of light and radiation enveloping your soul this planet feel it you probably are feeling it now and while people 
argue over ethnic sensibility issues here. Whether or not you can say Merry Christmas or say Happy Holidays, the truth dates back to our ancient beginnings. The intent of Christmas seems to be the overriding value behind its true esoteric meaning, its origin, a symbol or celebration is only as powerful as the intent behind it. While Christmas has become a merchandise, a biggest gluttony, a holiday that supports corporate world, which in turn lobbies against our rights. It's also a time of giving and being with your family. And this is what's important. And this is what's fun. Decorating our trees with fancy ornaments, placing gifts underneath them, cutting down, carrying an evergreen tree into the house, pine is supposed to be renewal. Pine with the pine cone is supposed to be everlasting life. It looks like your pineal gland. It's why it's called pine, and it's why I'm saying these words are new. DMT, even the story of the red and white magic mushroom. There is no DMT in that. There is DMT in us, in our pineal gland. And it's created through meditation and birth and death. It is our pine cone. It produces DMT. The pine tree is well known. A relic of the ancient Christmas story. Under this tree is those who are deemed good. Finding their reward in the form of a present, a gift. But it is not supposed to be physical gifts that we are getting. Something else. The red, the green, the white, Christmas colors comes from the evergreen tree. The red and the white could be from the mushrooms that grow underneath. I won't argue that too much. But they are telling you something. It's your reaction to them that produces the magic. You are the Magi, or the mess, if you will. The word Christmas, K-R-S-T, oiled, a knighted one, Egyptian, Kemet, Mez, is a sacred cake, ingested by the Egyptians, and from the looks of it, made you stoned as you know what. The Eucharist was supposed to represent that and we did it way before Christianity all of us everywhere we knew that this was the time of visions the time of the divine madness if you will mess to give ourselves over to see the light to do the travel to do the journey the symbols and icons that we associate with Christmas. These celebrations are derived from the ancient shamanistic traditions of tribal people, especially from Northern Europe, who had their language stolen really bad. You know, when I'm telling you about the German myths and the Roman myths and the things that are happening to us still, I'm not blaming the people I'm not blaming the people who live there. A few elite have done this. And that's all. People who lived in dwellings made of birch and reindeer hide called yurts gave us this. Similar to teepees, wigwams, yurts had a central smoke hole 
also used as an entrance. But then, you're doing this, you're doing the divine gift, and the smoke goes up. It's supposed to go out. This is again shamanistic. That you take the energy from the ground and you send it up. To this day, Siberian shamans dress in red and white fur trimmed jackets and they gather magic mushrooms. First they pick and place the mushrooms to dry them beneath the pine, which prepares them for ingestion and makes the load lighter. This is why we decorate our Christmas trees with ornaments, bulbs, because the gatherers would always adorn the trees with drying mushrooms. It would look pretty. Next, the shaman collects his red and white presents in a sack, proceeds to travel from house to house delivering them. In those winters, snow piles up past the doors of yurts, huts, whatever, wherever we lived at the time. The red and white shaman would climb and deliver his presents. Villagers string the mushrooms up like stockings hung to dry by the fire. In the morning, the presents under the pine tree were dried. They were ready to eat. And I can't imagine how stoned we were. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, just as Siberian shaman, dressed in red and white, would give their gifts, Santa Claus is now coming through our chimney. Some say the shamans came through the top, but they did not. That's, that's again a lie. The Siberian reindeer also enjoy eating these mushrooms. So they're often used to lure the deer herding. And this stoned part of Christmas. This is the ancient stoned god. Again. this is the guy who's after your kids once again I don't know why they're always after the children but all of these stories Santa Claus is coming to, Claus is coming to town he sees you when you're sleeping he knows when you're awake that's scary you better not be looking at me scary thing probably why I had a nightmare about it. And then, St. Nicholas, supposed to be the patron saint of children. Second most revered saint in Russia. Second only to the apostles. What he was. Was a Russian Orthodox Church supplanter that took the native people's highly respected local shamans and killed them. That's St. Nicholas, protector of children. The shaman is a holy man, well acquainted with the form of spirituality that incorporates all the plant ethos, the near-death experience. St. Nicholas was not a shaman, he just took the symbolism, the coloring of his robes, and killed the people. You know, it's an interesting play on words. Another name for a large cap mushroom is toadstool. So if Santa is a mushroom, and a mushroom is a stool, when children sit on Santa's lap, they are sitting on a toad stool. Santa's famous magical journey where he takes his sleigh around the whole world in one night developed from the heavenly chariot used by the gods 
from whom Santa has taken over. The chariot of Odin, Thor, Osiris, is now known as the Big Dipper. It circulates around the North Star in a 24-hour period. Different versions of the same story, the chariot is pulled by a reindeer or horses. But if you look on my page, traceelementsradio.com, you will see the first image of Santa riding a reindeer with eight legs. That is Loki's son. And he does not ride through the heavens. He li- rides through the underworld. So no matter how many times we have a Big Dipper, which is the chariot of Odin and Woden and Thor and King Arthur and even Osiris, the chariot circles the North Star. And you need to stay off this thing. This is an old tradition. The birth of Horus, the goddess, virgin, mother, Isis, is perhaps one of the oldest myths. And scary. Santa is an anagram for Satan. He dresses in red. He keeps lists of naughty children. He seems to steal Christmas from Jesus. If understood, in a deep way, this is a very scary thing that we are seeing. He is not a happy guy. This is not a happy myth. This is again how our way of life was stolen. So whether or not you want to sit on Santa's lap, there's a reason children are screaming when you bring them to him. When they stop screaming, it means that they have already lost their souls. After you've been traumatized enough, you stop screaming. This is the way of things. This is the dark side of Santa. Santa, who is the Punisher. My son would like that. Because I said the Punisher isn't a superhero. Well, he's really not. (laughs) He's not. This is the dark side. This is the occupying of our North Pole. Our beloved stories. Our television holiday specials. This kind, jolly elf. We're always told that the elves loved making toys for Santa. Do they? Because they like kids? This is Krampus. This is what this thing is. And while children are being told and are trying their hardest to stay up late to catch a glimpse of this thing, Austrian children cower in fear that they will be whisked away by Santa's not so jolly companion. The naughty list will lead you to a lump of coal. All the images I found of the old Krampus depict a hairy beast, ram horns, dressed in red, hooved feet, canine incisors, packed with a blood-red mouth because he was eating the children. He is the terror of Christmas, the wearing of and thrashing about in heavy chains, like in that movie. It symbolizes his bond with the devil as he carts away the naughty on a one-way ticket to hell. 
Crepe's role as a dark shadow proves that there are two sides to everything here. Stemming from Germanic folklore. It was not until the 17th century that Santa's evil solidified in his role as a Christmas tradition in Central Europe. Jolly St. Nick is new, delivers presents under decorated trees. Krampus throws children in the sack and starts giving some corporal capital punishment. Tales describe Kramp Krampus leading the naughty children to death by eating and drowning and beating with birch tree branches. Legend has it Krampus wanders the streets on the eve of St. Nicholas Day. Actually, December 6th, but he stays around for the whole month. And this still continues. People dressed up in devilish figures to terrorize children. It's been banned a lot because it's horrific, obviously. But the dark side of Santa, how can it be ignored? He was the beast. Not one of them, but the bad guy. Showing, you know, I don't know how, how more demonic you get into this. This is an old thing that we had in our heads. Way before Rudolph. And the new film hitting the theaters right now, Crampy? Krampus? <laughs> A tale of deadly holiday spirit who cares nothing for your milk nor your cookies. Krampus creature has its roots in a very real tradition, tradition that viewed Christmas as something horrible. Way before Jesus and his December birthday bash, Bavarian folklore that the Brothers Grimm were commissioned to write gave us a horde devil, or God, terrorizing villages during a snowy season, pushing and judging wayward children. This is Old German. means claw. It's why we still have Santa Claw. It's why Santa has a claw. Because Grampus was clawed. He knows when you're naughty. Disturbing. Part of the holidays. It was something you were supposed to lock your doors. Tradition told that during the first two weeks of December, young men dressed up as Krampus and roamed the streets, frightening children with chains and whips and bells. It appeared as a guy with a staff back to Horace, or a pagan phallic symbol that also came handy for beating children. Connections with later what would become initiation rites of covens, rites that entailed binding and scoring as a form of mock death. Early elves? well believed to be stories about the kobolds, the elves, the dark ones. They were not happy fairies. They would grab you and take you, rape you sometimes, the rattling of chains. Later, Christians started using that as an attempt, I guess, to bind the devil. But again, it is something much older. 
and you had to watch your tongue too along with the birch branch horns chains claws another way to know you're dealing with an authentic Krampus he had a long lolling tongue gross and he would trap children with his tongue he lugged baskets barrels sacks wash tubs to take away the children children that people couldn't afford at the time and what better way to spirit the children away to hell was Krampus's dinner table remember the story Pan Pan's Lambrin there was this thing who had eyes in his head it was a really creepy image that looked like um, he hadn't eaten in months who would lay out a table and welcome the children in and that's why Santa was brought to America with a coke with coke it's about tempting the children the notion of terrifying and kidnapping children comes in part from the white slave trade that flourished all over Europe especially in middle um, medieval times and North African raided European coast to abduct children into slavery tempting them with probably candies bright things so some European and even American towns now have an annual Krampus run involving hundreds not thousands of people and good old fashioned alcohol of course Krampa likes your cookies your milk but the traditional Krampus likes alcohol and drugs the hard kind so it would be more appropriate to, to offer him I don't know schnapps they always want your kids and how we got even how we allowed this I don't know but using enough of our old knowledge the things we would have known this thing is the Antichrist it is not the coal bearing ho 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 but ho is what shepherds used to call in the sheep come ye little children so I'd like all of the other mythical creatures who actually stalk children the boogeyman the monsters under bed Santa is getting a pass. Parents like to dispel negative myths. Firm the happy ones. Everything has a dark side. If you cross him, if you're naughty, and he knows it, there is no room for repentance. You are condemned. This is a disciplinarian. This is Santa the Punisher. and the stealer of children which was really happening all across Europe still happening now do you think kids don't go missing this time of year this is one of the biggest times of a year where children go missing so Christmas with the Punisher is not exactly happy is it and what it's doing to adults infiltrating your dreams guard yourself tonight because the dark one comes it's not a bright cheery happy Christmas <laughs> I still want you to have a Merry Christmas and